And so there you have heard a multi-layered prophecy delivered by the one God that we should stop fighting at this point, at least those who are still fighting and still trying to keep a certain status quo. You will never be able to keep the status quo. You will never be able to preserve the status quo and the ending you want against the voice of the Lord. The name of the prophecy is the iniquity of the Amorites, a scattering from mystery Babylon. And here I will just add at the end a prophecy that is not going to be able to stand alone because my assignment first and foremost is to the United States of America. So that is the bulk of the prophecies. However, there is a message that the Lord gave for South Africa. And the message is dated January the 20th, 2024, which is when God first started raising it with me. And it is fitting to add it here because the cautions that the Lord is giving to the nation of South Africa is almost in tandem with some of the warnings that are being here, which is that primarily God says that if South Africa is not careful to manage two things, the level of violence and the racial disparity in that country, he says, if you're not careful to manage the division, then you will end up on the front lines of a race and color war reminiscent of what is coming to America. Reminiscent means almost identical means if you think of one, it will immediately bring to your memory the other. And God is saying, regardless of what race you are in South Africa, when you hear this and whether you are saved or not, know that if you do not manage the level of violence, violence is different from crime. Crime runs the gamut. You steal a pen and it's an expensive pen. Maybe it's somebody's expensive pen that they lend you at the bank. We want to fill in something and then you walk off with it knowing that they're distracted for a moment. That's crime, but it doesn't really involve violence. Violence is always a part of major crimes, but crime doesn't always have to involve violence. I hope you understand that. So when you speak of violence, there is an aggression and the kind of aggression that is coming forth in South Africa and has been building up for quite a while, you as South Africans, you know that this thing is not natural. So here you can hear a crime, there's a bank heist and everything. But then when you hear a crime of a two-year-old was slept with by the, the guy at the daycare or the kind of crime that just made headlines, I think, a month ago, where two... Two ladies left their toddlers in the care of these men who were working at the mall. And it's not as if the men started working at the mall there. No, there was friendship. So these women believed that these men were safe people. And these men then took the toddlers to the bathroom, seven of them, and took turns, took turns violating these children. So we can say heinous, heinous, and it is heinous. But then when we look deeper, you know that this is demonic workings. So then this is proving right to everything that God has been saying here for years, that the escalation in the difficulty of the crime, we will find the crimes difficult to countenance. How do seven men take turns on people who are not yet two years old? These babies were not yet two years old. So the safe place is to say, oh, how could the mother forget about that? Because that's where you, you, you always want to go to the obvious. God is speaking to the non-obvious. You want to hide in the obvious because you are afraid to enter into where the prophecy is taking you. God is taking us into the realm where it's not the people doing it anymore. God is taking us into the realm where we have to understand that now the bodies are becoming homes for things that I always told you would come. That is why the two year old, two year olds are getting violated. Because time was you could leave a two-year-old with any grandpa and come back and find the baby happy and ready to go home with mom. You can't try it now, even with your brother. And that is the heart of the prophecy. Not the mother's bad decisions, which I'm not condoning. But don't focus there. That's the safe railing that you want to cling on to. Come into the deep water where the Holy Spirit is telling you, look there if you want to be my friend. Look there if you claim that you are mature and grown. 
Violence is escalating in the nations and violence. You can be your own witnesses. You can testify to your own crimes that are happening there. You know what's in the newspaper. Very little of it makes it here. But he's saying that if this racial divide, this racial tearing, it's the comments, it's not just the history of the apartheid, it's the, it's the comments. How do you project yourself when you are on certain ads or when you see certain ads? What comes up in your heart? When I posted this post, a lot of people began confessing. A lot of people, black and white, began confessing, I'm guilty of this. I'm guilty of this. And this is what prophecy is supposed to do. It's supposed to stir you to repentance. It's not just about sitting and talking nonsense that is gone in two minutes and then it doesn't have an effect on anyone. You just want to hear yourself. Prophecy actually has a work to do in the human heart. And that's because, as I said in the beginning of this video, God is looking for a people fit to meet him. Not everyone will be fit. That's what the prophetic word does. It comes in and it cuts all the fat so that you can be fit. Because heaven is a very narrow door. If you can't fit, you can't get in. God says that violence will put you guys in a color war. Almost close to what America is going to have. So America has no way out of her war. She's going into it no matter what. It's her judgment. But he says that if you in South Africa are not careful to manage it, he says you will end up obsessed and torn to pieces by a racial divide the same way America will be utterly decimated and shattered by that same racial divide. That's just one of the spokes of the American wheel. When she goes into her civil war, and you cannot overcome this kind of thing by just saying, okay, thank you, we've heard the word, or saying, oh God, please help us. That's not it. There's hard work to prevent prophetic judgments. So now you are hearing that something is hanging over your nation. I shared 2022, on one of the prayer calls, the Lord was showing that South Africa is a nation that has been overtaken by the principality of the, of the dragon. So if I can explain that to you, the principality of the dragon is none other than Lucifer, himself, Satan, fallen angel of light, bringer of chaos and destruction into the lives of men. When that principality is loose in a nation, it is a brute force principality. Just go and read any folklore about dragons. They're not known to be gentle. They work with size. They are extremely crafty and cunning. In the old days, when dragons were outside, they used to converse with people. They used to set you a riddle to see if you were smart enough. This is the equivalent of a cat today playing with its food before it eats it. These things were out there. People were not dra drawing them in the mythology for nothing. So when that spirit is over, the violence, the shedding of blood, it will not be satisfied un unless there's a ritual somewhere. It will not be satisfied unless there's a rape somewhere. Blood has to be coming out. Someone has to be cut from the throat down to the genitals and everything scooped up. If I have to see these things in the visions, you absolutely know they're coming out in the prophecies because I do not come here to pander to people's sensitivities. Clutch your pearls. I can't see you. I'm not moved by that. This is people's souls here. When the truth is told, deliverance comes. So the violence is there. If you, if you live in that country, you read your own newspapers. So you know then if this is tracking in truth, or you can say, no, we're actually just like Norway and we don't know what you're talking about. But if you do know what I'm talking about, then God is saying that this spirit is winning. This is why people are so bloodthirsty. This is why there's so much rape, child abuse, human trafficking, femicide. These are big, big sins. We're no longer talking about stealing the pen. This is brutality against flesh. There's massive judgments for that. And God will let you have a war. So you can't just say, what do we do? This is prayer and fasting territory. This kind goeth out, not except by prayer and fasting. So that's the first thing. You need, you need to humble yourselves as a nation. And it's not the black side repenting and then the white side repenting. This is cohesiveness, co cohesiveness now. To say we will not go down like America. We have watched enough of these American videos and this is not how we want to end. 
because God has said that there's a door for us. There's no door for them, but there's a door for us. We want to take that door. This is humbling yourself. This is humbling yourself. Let your ears be open to what the Lord is warning you about today. In March, 2022, the Lord gave me a prophecy for Nigeria. I brought the prophecy out. Nigeria behaved exactly like America. The insults were there. The accusations were there. What lies are these? You don't even know us. What are you talking about? All the things were said between March, 2022, and then in December, 2022, and January, 2023. What happened, Nigeria? Leave your testimony in the com comment section of what happened to your money. Leave your testimony in the comment section of how insane the jihadists have become, how bold they are now, bolder than you've ever seen them, and the government helpless like wet spaghetti in front of them. Leave your testimony in the comments of how you told me that the prophecy will return to me and my house. And then the prophecy decided that it didn't like my house and it was going to come to you in Nigeria after all and fulfill itself upon you, even to the point that people lost their lives because of the government tricking you, destroying the economy, robbing you of your money and leaving you destitute. A rogue government, I said, would arise. And what do you have now? Do you like it? Don't mock the word of God when it comes and don't be misled by popular opinion. It can have very dangerous and physically felt consequences. So the racial division is fueled by a particularly violent and cruel spirit. It has a rampaging personality that can make the human brain very overheated, blind. This is what they call blind rage. You just see a black person and just you're set off. You just see a white person and you're set off. This is not normal measured human behavior. This is the work of spirits under a leash. This is when God is still suppressing. This is people are still praying. People are still crying out to God and say, please, please, Lord, don't let this thing unleash on us. Under a leash, that spirit will limit itself only to using very cutting words and displaying anger. But if nothing is done, the spirit will then break off that leash and it can end up and will end up tearing flesh. You know your history is South Africa, but the question God is asking is, do you want to repeat it? This is a decision you will have to make as a nation. A lot is going on spiritually with your country. This is what God was sharing with me, South Africa. And he says, Yah says that if you do not pray steadily and committedly, committedly means you're not half on the fence. So you're not at the parties. And then you're still saying, oh my goodness, I have a standing appointment to pray with God at 7 p.m. every day. So I need to get home in time. No, it's not like that. You're not doing the half and half life. Your life is not dark and shadow. You are now making the decision that you have finally woken up to the truth that it is the end times. You can't deny it anymore. You've seen the changes. You've seen the suffering. You've even been having the Holy Ghost scratching at your own heart. Come out of the streets. It is time. It is now time to step out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of life, light, and stay in the light until you hear the trumpet, until you hear the shout of the archangel, and then you will know you made it. You're home free. So God says, if you do not pray, a lot has been planned by the devil for South Africa. And God says, if you do not pray, the things that are planned will manifest. So that means that Satan is not even busy with the prophecy. Satan is busy on his own agenda and Satan is going to ramrod that agenda unless he is stopped. So this means it's not about tears. It's not about, oh God, help us. It's actually about the kingdom suffereth violence and the violence are going to block it right back. The violent are going to learn the words of the scripture and then just say that the, king, the kingdom of darkness, Satan, you will not prevail against God's house. South Africa is God's house and we are going to defend the house, white and black and Asian, locked hand in hand. This is our land and we're not going out like that. We choose righteousness. Our prophecy still has a little door out. It's not like Americans and their prophecy. Our prophecy has this tiny little door and we're going to accept the knife of this prophecy to cut us so we can fit through that door. We're going to escape 
the outcome. We're not going out like that. Whenever you are a country and there is a caveat where God says you were doing well and then you began to do sin and he will relent and you cry out like Nineveh and you repent. As long as your prophecy is not a final prophecy, the Lord will do exactly like he did with Hezekiah and Isaiah. He will send the prophet right back to tell you, you've pleased me and I will relent considering the evil that I thought to do you. But when you have a final judgment, no caveats, no way out, then as you may have noticed, the more the word comes, the more the hearts of the pharaohs become filled with rage and the higher they shout, no, it shall not be. But we know what happened to Pharaoh. So the Lord says, um, if you do not pray, the things that are planned will manifest and you will find yourselves in the middle of an economic destruction. So you're going to have a countrywide breakdown, just like Nigeria had. We're talking industry, money, jobs, everything hard impacted. And he also says, and a race war that you haven't seen since the days you first won your liberation. So let America be a great warning for you, Yah says. Do not let it get to that point. So the second thing that the Lord was pressing on me, this prophecy was brought out, I think, on January 24th. He was speaking to me since the 20th, but I only had time and I didn't know when I would make a video next. So I just had to write it on the community page because when the word is hot like that, you need to bring it so that it's recorded in the ears of people. The Lord began to speak about this lady who used to be a model dating the Blade Runner. Her name is Riva Steenkamp. And these are the exact words the Lord gave. So many people misunderstood the prophecy. So much prejudice in the heart of people. I really do not know what is wrong with people in these end days. Of course, I know. I talk about what's wrong with people all the time. Yah says, and this is what he was talking about, and he was pressing it. He said, Riva Steenkamp. Steenkamp? No, this is a typo. It's Steenkamp. Riva Steenkamp will be vindicated. Riva still has more to say. Riva will be vindicated. She will be proven right. She is holding evidence she will prove it in the open for everyone to see. Riva Steenkamp will be proven right. So you can hear the repetitiveness of the Holy Spirit. This is early morning. This prophecy, I received it as soon as I opened my eyes on January the 20th. As soon as I came into consciousness and woke up, it was the very first thing that God was talking about. Now just imagine you're sitting here in New York City. It's a, it's a Monday or a Tuesday. You've got a full day ahead of you. And the minute you open your eyes, God is talking about something so out in left field. Riva Steenkamp will be proven right. From beyond the grave, her voice will speak and she will have her say. Thus says the Lord. And so this message was sitting in me for five days before I finally put it here on the community page. And the Lord, every day that I didn't publish, every day that I didn't mention it, prophecy has to be proclaimed or the Holy Spirit will not leave you alone. The longer you keep it, he will keep saying the thing over and over again. And as you've seen today, the prayer call came because the prophecy that I'm reading to you now had not been published. So the prayer call just God just intervened on a live call, knowing that I will release that one. And now I'm following up with this one. So um, he was saying, tell them, Celestial, Riva is still speaking. She is not yet finished. She will be vindicated and proven right, even from her grave. Tell them what I said and let her parents know the matter is not done yet. So what I know is that this woman was dating the, the world famous Olympian, uh, Oscar Pistorius, the blade runner. And then he was in a shocking twist of events. This man was accused of killing this woman, of waking up in the middle of the night and shooting her as she went to the bathroom door. He was accused of monitoring the woman. He was accused of blind rage at times and jealousy, and he was not successful in proving his case in court. He lost his case and he went to jail some years ago. And at the time I was writing this, I just thought the man's case was over and he was in jail. And then people came and said that the man is free, which then makes entire sense of the pressure of the Lord. Cause I'm thinking, okay, Lord, the woman has passed on. She's holding evidence. I know what that means. 
To a person like me, I know what that means because how long have I been prophesying to America? Since 2022, I've been telling you that every cold case is about to be warmed up by Detective Jesus. That no person who died in a sexual assault and was, and was blended in sulfuric acid and lime, you thought you dissolved the person. They will find that one tooth that has her full name and address on it because she got that tooth and she thought it was fun. They will find it and they will catch you. They've been catching people since I made that prophecy. Subscribers are still emailing me and telling me you will not believe that they found a 15 year old corpse. I mean a 15 year, not 15 years of age, 15 years missing. God is going to dig up every hidden dirt and put it on blast. You're going to prison at 71 years old. Congratulations. You will be caught. And that is what he was saying here. But when the information now came to complete, because we know in part, when the South Africans began to then say the man is free, then I thought, no wonder this thing is under the hood of the Holy Spirit. A person who was supposed to complete a prison term in 2030 relaxing at home with an ankle bracelet like he merely stole something from Walmart instead of taking a life that cannot be replaced. This is what God is saying, that hidden evidence will speak. He's not saying the woman is going to rise from her rest and speak. He's saying that there is more to the story. He's saying that justice has been failed by the human agencies, perhaps because the man is famous, perhaps because the man is rich, Perhaps because the man is connected in ways that are not immediately visible. Whatever the reason is, the Lord says that the woman will be vindicated. That means the story that her defenders were bringing forward in courts is not yet complete and that there is more yet to come. And this should be an upliftment for anybody in South Africa who has been wronged, living or dead. God is actually saying here that justice is a big deal with him and that he's not going to leave justice in the hands of unrighteous men. Why? Because juries can take bribes because parole boards can be contacted privately and offered money and offered incentives. And then killers can come out and be sitting at home and watching Netflix and chill. God is done with man because there's not one righteous. There's not one that will stand up and advocate for what is good and true in the eyes of God. Human beings are gone. They're defending pedophiles now in the church. We are beyond the pale. It's all done. There's only three people crying in a corner. Come Lord Jesus, come. Because those people have an awareness of how much we need him to do the good that we are no longer capable of doing. To support the rights that we cannot even detect. We support what we like. We no longer support what is true or good or pleasing to the Lord. Whatever the evidence is that supports this person's death, God is saying it will come out and he is setting here a precedent that you can kill, but the dead will be vindicated and will be able to talk beyond the grave. That is the message for South Africa. To be vindicated means that the public holds one story about you to be true and then intervening evidence will come out that will correct and adjust the story. And all of a sudden that tilted viewpoint that the public had, when you are vindicated, when God gets involved, he's going to fix that wrong viewpoint. And then everybody going, is going to say, oh, this was what it actually was. It's only Jesus who sees what is in the dark that will be able to bring and correct like that. And so this is your message, South Africa, fight against the spirits that are trying to take you down, fight against that spiritual violence that is beginning to manifest in the bodies of men and women, unrighteousness. Principality of, of, of the dragon even brings corruption. Just five minutes of Satan's corruption in heaven brought down one third of the stars with him, one third of his angel brothers thought that they could rush the presence of God, cast him out and establish themselves as lords. That is a violent, damaging, rampaging, sneaky, shrewd, corrupting influence. 
When something is corrupting, it's rotting. And just like tomatoes in a bag, when the, when this one gets started, every other tomato touching it also begins to develop that white fluff at the top. That's not how you want to go out. You don't want to end your lives with white fungus at the top as a nation, South Africa. So hear the word of the Lord. Um, yes, the word for you is to read Ezekiel chapter 33. That is when the watchman is sent to warn you that the sword is coming. And then there's two outcomes. You will listen and you will turn back your feet and repent, or you will not listen. And then your blood will be on your own head, but it won't be on my head because I've given you the word. I've given America the word for years and we can all see how it's going. May those who have ears to hear repent, both here in the United States and everywhere else. You do not need to be an American to be convicted by the truth of the prophecy. You just need to have hearing ears and a heart that if your heart is too hard, have the conversation with God and just say, I know that I'm already halfway reprobate. I know it. I can't deny what she's saying, but I cannot find in me the will to change. That means you are locked into a posture of sin. You're already locked in. This means that Satan has strapped you into that car seat. And by right, Satan has the right to take you when you get to that point. But as long as there's anything in your heart that can cry out for mercy, then cry out for the mercy. Because why should you die, O oh man? God takes no pleasure in the death of the unrighteous. He doesn't gloat in the death of the sinner. It doesn't mean that he's not going to judge you if you continue sinning, but it's not, it doesn't mean that he enjoys it. Why are you forcing him to put you in hell with the choices that you make, with the life that you pursue? Why is your little mouth the reason that so many of you are headed to a tombstone and then I have to see it? And then you are upset when I tell you, like I'm the one who's sending you there. It's your mouth. It's your heart. It's you. You're literally signing all the papers and making the contract. And then you have the nerve to be offended. For what? Repent. Repent. Your knees, they have a hinge. Bend them. Humble yourself. Don't be like Pharaoh who humbled himself under the ocean waves. Do it on dry land. It's much easier. And then you can get on with the rest of your life. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. The Master's Voice can be found at www.the-masters-voice.com.